And welcome to Advantage Radio Ministries and welcome to Second Chances here at Lift FM. This is our weekly program in which if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you do understand that our God is the God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, because through his grace he sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die on the cross that we could have life and have it more abundantly and uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the reason this program is on each and every Tuesday night right here at Lift FM is to give you the opportunity to hear what God would love to do for you. The people that we have on this program, some are pastors, some are missionaries, some are plumbers, some are authors, whatever the case may be, but they all have one common bond, and that is that they love Jesus Christ, and they have allowed uh, God to operating their lives they've surrendered their life to god and if you've been searching for that opportunity in your life to you know experience what you hear other christians talking about here's what we can tell you before this half hour is done we're going to give you the opportunity to invite jesus christ to be the lord of your life so we invite you to continue to listen to this program right here at lift fm and uh, we hope that the lord will work in your life today and we are pleased and privileged to have with us on this program today, Reverend Cedric Holmes. He is the author of the book entitled Physician, Heal Thyself. And Reverend Holmes, thank you for joining us here on Second Chances. Thank you, Greg. Now, as we always like to do, we always like to begin our programs by learning a little bit about our guest. And why don't you give me, uh, Reverend Holmes, a little bit of background on, on who you are and, and where you're from and different things like that so we can kind of uh, learn a little bit about you. Oh, great, great. Praise God, and I thank God for this opportunity. I was actually uh, born and raised in a little town in Cape May County, Woodbine, New Jersey, born at Bert F. Tomlin Memorial Hospital in Cape May Courthouse. Um, by way of uh, going through Woodbine, I went to Millville uh, High School, and later on I went to the service and came back and worked in the community and uh, just been pastoring for the last... 15 years in Vineland, and most people didn't know that about me. Most people probably know me as Coach Holmes or the Barber or whatever else they know me as, but they've all been good things prayerfully. Mm. So as we often <clears throat> have had a chance to um, find out in this program that the Lord uses people in so many different ways and gets their attention— uh, first of all, was there a time in your life, and, and we would ask that you speak as loudly as possible, uh, our connection is not always the best, uh, but is there ever been a t- was there a time in your life, uh, Reverend Holmes, where the Lord got your attention and said, you know what, I want you to surrender it all, and I want you to live for me? Yes, Greg. Um, actually, um, September 12th of 2012, um, I was sitting in um, a situation where um, I was actually in the middle of a football field, a midget football field in Vineland, um, kind of during my lunch break, um, trying to semi-do my piece of practice. Um, and my sister gave me a call while I was standing in the middle of the field, and she had heard that I had a problem with a uh, mass behind my eye. And um, she began to talk to me, and she was saying that God is out of a second chance, and he's giving you a second chance. So I didn't understand what she was talking about. Um, certainly, I didn't understand what she even meant by, you know, all the things that I had been doing at that time and all the things that I had been doing at that time were exclusively working for the state of New Jersey. I had my own barbecue business at that same time, and I was coaching uh, at a high school level and also at a midget football f- um, level. Um, and at that time, um, I'm being told, you know, I'm doing too much. Um, and this is the conversation that my sister is having with me. So uh, certainly when she said second chance, I really didn't know at that time um, that in October that very same year I would be diagnosed with a rare form of cancer um, behind my right eye. And by November uh, 2012, the 16th, I actually lost that eye to uh, cancer. So certainly that was uh, something that woke me up and I begin to realize how important um, life is more than just um, doing things. And I thought in doing things in the community and being a positive person all, overall, I thought that uh, absolutely that would be enough to kind of um, 
be satisfying on God. You know, one of the things that uh, most of us who have made that decision to live for Christ to realize that you need to really surrender it all to the Lord, and, and He really needs to be priority in your life. And, and let's face it, whether you are a Christian currently or are seeking the Lord, uh, one thing's for sure is that it's very difficult to serve the Lord if you're so busy doing this and doing that and, and being here and being there that you don't have any personal time with the Lord so the Lord can work with you and mold you into the person he wants you to be. Is that correct, Reverend Holmes? Yes, Greg. As a co-founder of a, mis- mis- uh, a ministry, um, as a pastor for, as I said, 15 years, um, you, you know, I've never dreamed of, I've often heard of, you know, a full-time ministry in churches, even some churches locally that may employ their pastors full-time. I never inspired to be a full-time pastor. So I often, even the conversation with my sister, I, I just equated it to, you know, this is my piece of what I'm to do um, to earn an income and just be a positive influence and, you know, kind of go to church on Sunday and, you know, not give deliver a message and, and try my best to live this Christian walk. Um, But certainly, yes, this is um, something that I think uh, I have become very much aware of, that it it does cost laying down our lives. And um, truly, um, that's what Second Chance really meant to me. That It really rang to me when she said he was giving me a second chance. Mm. And you know what is very interesting, and this is is said for the purpose of our listeners that uh, don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but... Until Reverend Holmes just shared that story with us about his sister and telling telling him that the Lord wanted to give him a second chance, I had no idea uh, when a mutual friend put us together that you know his sister had said that. But it's certainly uh, Lord has a sense of humor because he delivers them to a program called Second Chances. So, <laughs> Reverend Holmes, uh, tell us how how you actually uh, be, became a minister, uh, became a reverend. Tell us the story there. Actually, I, I was involved in prison ministry and doing um, just work kind of in the form of human services, started cutting hair. And I really felt inspired, um, even as a young man, um, to uh, really, um, I felt like I had a message. I, I felt like there was something deep down inside of me. Uh, I, I'm going to say this, but, but it's so it was so true. I, I felt like the commercial E.F. Hutton. You know, there was a commercial when I was younger, and it said, when E.F. Hutton everyone list, uh, speaks, everyone listens. <laughs> I remember that. And, and I felt like I, there was an E.F. Hutton kind of guy inside of me because I felt that there was something in my bowels that, that needed to be um, spoken to uh, the atmosphere. I just didn't have uh, uh, the place to do that, um, and I was very, very shy, um, should, should we say. Um, but I, I started playing football. Um, on a semi-pro level when I got back from the service. And, and I began that, I think that really began to let me lead in that kind of way and, and become more outspoken um, as a leader. And uh, so I, I kind of came out of the shadows of, of being the quiet guy who really wouldn't say much. And I kind of sometimes felt like, not that I was living a contrary life, but I, I just felt like I didn't want to intrude on other people's ideologies or their beliefs. I didn't want to, you know, uh, make them feel uncomfortable by, by my views, because certainly Christ is, is a God of love, but um, I, I kind of took the back road, and, I, you know, people would come up to me, and they would say, oh, I'm sorry I cursed, and I would say, oh, it's okay. You know, I always had that kind of uh, persona around people, not that I was perfect, but they just seemed to excuse themselves when they did wrong around me, and I I let them know certainly that I wasn't a saint, but um, I, I certainly definitely feel that um, my life was really, really patterned um, to, to get into ministry, not just to stand behind the pulpit and deliver some powerful message. Even um, most recently, I've, I've found that I've never been more interested in evangelizing and spreading the good news than I am now. Um, six months ago, I, I would be honest with you, I, I was more concerned probably with getting healthier and, you know, going out and trying to look for opportunities to speak and give my testimony. But um, now I'm, I'm, I'm okay with um, 
being in the background uh, and really leading from the background. And um, I thank God for that humility, and I, and I want him to continue to minister to me personally and mold that and shape that in my life because I, I think that there there could be times where we can get too proud of our accomplishments. But even the Bible says those that win souls are truly wise. Mm. Um, we're visiting with Reverend Cedric Holmes. He is the author of the book, Physician, Heal Thyself, and uh, Reverend Holmes. We're going to get into that book in, in just a moment, but um, one of the things that uh, I would imagine, and I don't know because as we often talk about, I don't usually discuss too many things with my guest ahead of time because I like to find out things just as our listeners do, but one of the things that uh, you mentioned is... Uh, People may know you from from coaching. People may know you from the the barber shop, but each of those things that you were involved in coaching and, and uh, barber shops and things like that, they're very personalized relationships. So, did those relationships ultimately allow for you to witness to others to get them saved and set free because of the bond you had with, you know, uh, perhaps uh, uh, people that you coached or people that you. Uh, you know, did work with her hair and different things? Yes, yes, certainly. And and barbering went right to, um, you know, counseling, um, and, and counseling went right to ministering even on a deeper level. But um, certainly um, even even football, and, and because I was professionally um, a substance abuse counselor, um, I often knew that, you know, you, you couldn't intrude on people's of faith and politics and even barbering ethics told you you couldn't talk about religion and politics because but that was that was uh, the things they said but certainly that were a lot of the conversations in the barbershop were certainly about race religion and 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 different politics but um certainly I I've, I've often um I'm, I'm just thankful to God that I I was uh gentle enough and humble enough um to to really I think allow people to feel free to talk to me um, I've had counseled adolescents all the way up to uh, inmates in the prison system and, and ultimately young men who have never been involved with the legal system. And I, and I just, I really like um, finding out that even the word coach is, is like being a father when the father is absent. Mm. So uh, if, I, if I told you uh, 10 years ago that not only you're going to be a, a coach, a uh, barber, or let's say 15 years ago, a coach, a barber, a minister, and now an author, what would you have told me? I would have said, Greg, uh, how how you know all these things about me that, that I could never even imagine myself? And, you know, um, I would have really wondered how, how that was all going to play out. Um, but certainly I, I can I can see uh, the master's hand unfolding my life even, you know, up until this point. Um, so I'm I'm truly thankful. I know when I have people on this program that have written books, and I ask them, well, how did you go to write a book? And, and uh, did you ever expect to? Most of them say, well, that was the furthest thing from my mind. Uh, so tell us, first of all, was this the first book you've ever put out? Yes, this is the first book that I've ever written. And how did it come to be? Well, at many years ago, as I first got into counseling at entry level at Southwood State Prison, in Bridgeton, New Jersey, I took an entry-level position at that time um, as a counselor, um, and it was um, something that really, really touched my life. It was most people that know substance abuse treatment would know the the term therapeutic community, or TC, uh, which is ultimately the therapeutic community. Um, there are approximately 124 inmates in that community, and six counselors, and probably a supervisor, and a unit supervisor and other management, but ultimately that that uh, block or that cell block or that unit, would we call it, um, ultimately became a, a healthy community, um, and, and it talked about things like fostering personal growth. Um, it addressed um, even staff and uh, inmates on their inconsistent behaviors that really were attached to probably some of their addictive behavior. So ultimately, that started to drop a, a seed in me um, that began to grow into a concept of it. I, I really say this humbly. I, I, I believe that I really became a man um, going to prison, but I wasn't locked up. I, I, I could leave every day. 
Um, I had the freedom to come in and go out. Um, sometimes looked different at differently, even from um, staff members. Um, but it's just because that's the level of custody that hit in security. But ultimately, I, I became a man um, dealing with with um, inmates and, and individuals that we called them at that time. They weren't even inmates; we called them residents. Um, but that that began to uh, begin to unfold in my mind of how healthy um, unity seemed to be um, when people get together in a community and they work together for the common good of each other. Mm. We are visiting with Reverend Cedric Holmes, the author of the book entitled Physician, Heal Thyself. And uh, Reverend Holmes, uh, before we go any further, is there a, a website or, or a way that someone could find out more about uh, your book that we're about to talk about, about you, your ministry? Is there a website that uh, one could visit? Yes, the website is truthbookspublisher.com. Truthbookspublisher.com. Dot com. Um, okay. The publishing part of a book, obviously, you know, there are people that have things on their heart to write, but then they go to get it published and they find it's not so easy. How, how was your experience to get it published? Uh, honestly, it was, it was pretty easier than I anticipated. The, the real hang-up began uh, when I was finally done um, putting everything together and I had to actually <laughs> deal with uh, putting the covers um, together and formatting and getting the artist to convert it to um, a PDF and the, all the technologies um, that are needed for it to go back to the publisher the right way. Um, and ultimately, there, there, took, there was a real testimony in that time. Uh, one of my good friends, um, Coach Val Forbes, actually was the artist um, who drew the paperwork for me. Um, for the artwork, for the cover, um, front and back. Um, he actually uh, was able to draw the picture out. When it came to making it PDF, he had to seek out a friend um, that was a fellow student of his uh, when he was at uh, Philadelphia uh, Art Institute. Well, anyway, she had, um, in this process of kind of getting the pictures back, um, trying to convert them to PDF and put color into them, she actually lost her husband to a heart attack. I mean, it was a very um, sad time, and uh, I just felt that I still needed to be patient um, and, and not go with someone else. Um, so we waited, and um, it was finally done, and I believe it was perfect timing. I told Coach Val, I said, let's just do it in black and white. <laughs> and he says, no, Coach, you can't do it just black and white. You, he, you got to have um, color. It's got to pop off the shelf. <laughs> and I was saying, well, if it's God doing it, it'll pop off the shelf no matter what it looks like. But that was humbling because that was the only real um, delay in it. But it was a delay that really blessed me um, and it taught me that, you know, um, life is too short to um, get upset about um, things that are out of our control. The book is entitled Physician, Heal Thyself, and uh, who, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Holmes, who is this book uh, about? It's about Jesus Christ and being the chief physician. It's often refers back to the word when you know, they, Jesus was challenged and brought up by, I would say, the religious folk of his era, and, you know, they were kind of provoking uh, him into the thought of, you know, if you are who you are, you know, heal yourself, you know, and ultimately, physician heal thyself is, is a getting us back as the body of Christ um, to recognize who Jesus Christ really is and um, what he really did for us um, to pay um, from, a, from a clinical perspective or from a doctor's perspective. Um, he had to become uh, the uh, ailment uh, or the, the solution to the ailment. Um, and ultimately um, save us from um, our, our dying souls and, and washing us through his precious blood. Um, so that's where um, the thought came from of physician heal thyself. But certainly it, it challenges the body of Christ um, to um, stand up and, and realize that something you said earlier, Greg, when you referred to um, 
how much it costs really, I'm paraphrasing, how much it costs really um, to really be a Christian. Um, we have to die to self. And um, that's what Christ did for us. Um, he, he healed himself, not through um, complaints, but um, he, he took his self to the cross to become the solution um, for our, our sins. If I was to ask you, Reverend Holmes, uh, what is the book about, what would you tell me? Ultimately, the book is about Jesus Christ. It's about what Jesus Christ finished work, um, what Calvary was, um, a finished work and, and a continued finished work of the responsibility of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, to come into full agreement and understanding of who we are. And it talks a lot about um, getting past our traditions and our, our thoughts of doctrines and different um, sects of Christianity that come somewhat um, always, I believe, limit us from really becoming together. I think that Sunday, I've heard other people say it, and I ultimately agree, Sunday is one of the most segregated days um, of the week. Um, ultimately, every other day we go to the market together, we shop together, we work together. But ultimately, um, I think that the body of Christ um, needs to come together. So it's much about unity. It's, about, it's much about um, becoming a strength um, and by doing what Christ did, and that's dying to self. Um, that we can ultimately become bear witness of his love to a dying world. And I, I believe it, it goes back to referring that Christ came for those who were sick, but he also came for those that were well. The well just didn't know how sick they really were, and ultimately the sick knew that they were in need of a Savior. Um, so ultimately I think the world that we live in today, I think even from, I'll speak for myself, um, certainly going through this experience with talking to my sister on the on the phone getting a second chance you're talking about a pastor um, who uh, feared God still being told he was getting a second chance to get things right and not that there was some a massive amount of sin it was just uh, when we're preoccupied with doing our own thing ultimately I think uh, if we want to throw sin in there that that word of uh, that that uh, bothers God. I think our sin, my sin, was that I was doing too much of uh, Cedric's thing and not God's thing. Mm. Well, where was this uh, book? Where, where would you say that it was birthed from? It birthed from, like I said, back to when I was in that therapeutic community, and I got to see the power of unity. Um, but when I got sick, um, when I went out of work, it uh, wind up being November of 2012 all the way up until April of 2013, I was out and it began to really um, give me time to really focus on, and I felt like God said, it's time now to write. And uh, he gave me the title and I began to write. And uh, and I just think it took off on its own. It, it, became, it unfolded on its own, and, and I, I believe it was birthed out of the original concept of unity, and then it was birthed out of ultimately um, who I serve and who I live my life for, and that's Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, Reverend Holmes, uh, the book is entitled Physician, Heal Thyself. Someone listening to the program today says, well, gee, I'd love to love to get a copy of that book. Uh, what is the easiest way for one to obtain, uh, obtain a copy of that, Reverend Holmes? The easiest way right now, because um, we're still being spirit-led, um, um, as far as where we release that book to, and, and ultimately um, we, we have it where it is available to go right into bookstores. Um, but the, the great thing about it is I have that in my hand, and I am able to pray about and, and kind of um, allow God to release that. So there are some, some areas that we're looking to venture into, um, even Amazon and possibly Borders, but ultimately um, you need a distributor to do that. Um, but we're still praying about those things. Right now the best way to get a hold of the book would be um, to just call me personally um, and or you could look it up again on truthbookpublishers.com and the book would be there. The exciting, th exciting thing about that website is that's actually... Um, the publisher who published the book, and they have other books right on that website that are uh, faith-based. Is there some information on your book as well on that site? 
Yes, there is. There okay. is information that we um, sent to the publisher regarding about the author. And certainly if you go onto that website and you pull the number, um, Ms. Janelle Lyle um, will be pleased to help you um, with trying to um, get a copy of that book um, because certainly they can um, get it right from um, the store there. Okay, that's Truth bookspublishers.com yes okay reverend holmes is uh, your sister did uh, years ago she conveyed a message to you that uh, you took to heart that uh, the lord wanted to give you a second chance and there may be people out there that are listening right now that have never been given an opportunity to make things right with god to uh, allow jesus to be the lord of their life and they've just been looking for somebody to ask the old story as well how can somebody get saved when nobody's asked them to get saved? So we're going to give you that opportunity right now. And Reverend Holmes, would you uh, lead us in a word of prayer to give those folks that are ready, willing, and able to uh, turn their life over to the Lord Jesus Christ the opportunity to do so? Would you lead us in that prayer? Yes, sir. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time, and we thank you for this season when people are looking uh, to you for an answer, Lord. And, and we pray that uh, the body of Christ that are listening to uh, this broadcast can begin to understand that there is, as Greg said, there is people that are searching and just wondering when is someone going to come and introduce me to this man that they call Jesus Christ. God, I thank you that it's not just about Resurrection Sunday that should prompt the minds of your believers and those that may come to become believers. Yes, Lord, the sick and the well. God, I ask that you would continue to mend the brokenhearted, Lord, and give them truly a second chance. But God, I pray that they would have a repentant heart, Lord, even the well that are so well off that don't really even understand that they're not as high as they should be. And as there is a local uh, my reminder of show nationally where they're talking about the have and the have-nots, Lord, we know that a principle that you have given us that we have not because we ask not. Lord, we don't ask for things. We don't ask for material things to gain wealth. And, but, God, we ask that we would have life and that more abundantly. Lord, we want the simple things. We want uh, just to, to be able to uh, breathe fresh air and walk out from uh, our communities and walk in our streets without uh, uh, ducking from gunshots or, or being uh, 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 targets of, of uh, just because we stand for something, Lord. God, we just want a place of, of refuge. We want a place of peace, and we know that there's people that are searching for that ability to see you, God, and to see your face. God, I ask that the church and the body of Christ, the ecclesia, will come out of their four walls, and they will begin to be a, a very present help in the time of church, that they would be very a visual and very uh, vibrant and very uh, forthcoming with their not uh, their beliefs lord but that they would show their love and not just do it just to be seen lord we thank you for these things and we put them before you god bring us into unity as you said father show them christ you said father show them that we were one that i was truly from you and you were from me god i ask that same prayer that the body of christ would say lord Allow us to be seen by you, by this world, that we are truly of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our guest has been Reverend Cedric Holmes, the author of the book entitled Physician, Heal Thyself. The website you can uh, obtain a copy uh, 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 of the book by visiting is truthbookspublishers.com. And if they want to reach out to you, Reverend Holmes, is there a way to do that? Yes, they can reach me at 856 856- Two one three eight two zero eight. They can also email me at b e a n a n s w e r t o p r a y e r at gmail dot com. That's just read out. Be an answer to prayer at gmail dot com. And uh, one final thing, uh, what is the church you pastor, if someone would like to maybe come see you speak sometime? The church where we are pastoring is in Vineland, 
It's called In the Company of Jesus Ministries, and we're located at 510 South 8th Street in Vineland, New Jersey. Okay, wonderful. Well, we wish you uh, much continued success uh, spreading the Word of God, and uh, we, we want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your schedule to come and, and, and uh, share your book with us. I thank you so much, Greg, and I thank Second Chance, and I thank for the confirming fact that, yes, I've been given the Second Chance, and I thank God for that opportunity. And uh, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to have you on our program. Our guest has been Reverend Cedric Holmes, the author of Physician Heal Thyself. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here from Advantage Radio Ministries on Lift FM.